You trying to tell me something? Just dropping it right by my feet. You wanna do some swims? Could you wait just a few minutes though? Cause I got the camera. I don't wanna get things wet over here. Okay, fine, we'll throw the ball just once. I think we all know how that goes. No way it's gonna be just once. You ready? Are you actually gonna go get it, Turbo? You ready? One, two, three, go get it. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Look at what a beautiful day it is. The sky's over there. Got some clouds. There's a gentle breeze. It's in the nearly triple digits over the weekend, and things have cooled off <laughs> to like the lower 90s, upper 80s. It's just the breeze and the clouds makes such a big difference. Pretty good timing for the July, June <laughs> garden tour. I almost said July. It's almost July. There's been a lot going on out here. So there's a decent amount of things to catch everybody up on. I have been doing some projects by myself without the camera. Mostly mulching, nothing crazy. I try and sell many things that's big and exciting for the most part. And maybe we'll start down here in the shade. Because even though it's not super hot for the camera, it's pretty toasty. Go get your toy? Go get it. Go find your toy. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Trying to keep his mind occupied. The laurel hedge. This got planted up in late May, early June. Old one had to go. It died from the freeze that we had back in December. The more of the rapid temperature changes. I'm in love with this. It's doing really well. There's some damn. Okay. Hold on. Like I said, I knew we'd be doing this over and over and over again. Part of it. Welcome to my backyard. A couple of them have some die off on them, but they are showing signs of not showing signs. They're putting out new growth. So you can see up top. So they're okay. Just some shocks. Your field dug burlapped and that's with the root ball on one of them to demonstrate why to not take the burlap off when you're moving them because it can crumble and then you lose some roots. And then I, well, this is what happened. So that's why you don't want to take the burlap off while you're moving your plants. And then lots of water and TLC won't fix. You can see the rest of them, lots of new growth, all the little green stuff coming out. I didn't know if they would put out any new growth this year. I assumed that they had done their growth spurtage before I got them in the ground, but it's looking like that may not be the case. Just about all of them are starting to do something. So that's great. I managed to get these at a really good size and they're going to put on some more. That's fantastic. What do you got? You get your seashell? And now you're done with it? Okay, that's great. I'm sure as soon as I start talking and he'll resume playing. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> as soon as I turn around, he stops. What are you doing? You're being a big distraction, Turbo. Yep, okay, well now that's gone. Solve that problem. Yeah, that's what's going on with the hedge. Hedge seems good. I did have to replant the majority of the impatiens that were planted up here in May, late April. I don't remember when, because getting these plants up the slope took most of them out. And a lot of them had been dug up and torn up by the dogs and some kind of critter. Haven't figured that out yet. I am noticing like there's some spots where something's digging. I'm not sure what it is. In fact, as I'm looking over here, there's a, I planted a smooch begonia on each side of the steps over here, and this one's gone. Here's the tag right here for the smooch begonia that I planted in this spot. It still has the stem on it. It was there yesterday. I checked on it. So something's out here chewing the plants up. I don't know what. I would assume rabbits, maybe? Do they eat begonias? Oh, no, you know what? That's probably dog damage. <laughs> Just tuck that back down in there. Maybe that will root out uh the dogs dogs had a play date yesterday and they were pretty good about using the path but apparently they must have cut through on the side there once these are all rooted in in a couple more weeks i don't think that'll be an issue anymore this will start filling in nicely this is maybe uh, four days since i replanted everything it's gonna take some time that's gonna fill out here are the ones that didn't get torn up this little section right here they're looking pretty good not as much light over here so i expect them to be a little bit more spindly not to get as much height on them. I also have a hardy orchid in the front here. It's one that I showed in a uh, plant haul video. It's been putting out some new growth. It's a Clinthe Kojima Violet. I also just mulched over here, so there's some things that are disrupted. A fresh layer mulch on the ground from there. This whole berm, and I added a six to 10 inch layer of mulch going from right here, which I've never done before. I've never mulched this area, so it goes right here all the way up and around trying to suppress the grass the neighbors are doing construction they don't have a lot in the weeds that have been 
coming up from all the, I guess the stuff being dug up in their yard has been insane. So I just said, you know what, no more lawn up there. I think that's fine. I think a nice bed of mulch from over here all the way down, that'll look nice. Got that up and over, swooped it around the base of this pine tree and curved it down this hill. So now this looks like one big continuous garden bed. And that's been fun. Been getting things planted up over here. I have a Blue Jangles hydrangea, some game changer hydrangeas that are ready to go in the ground up here. I threw some annuals in the front just for fun, for some extra color, some more impatience and caladiums. Again, only been a few days, so not much to see with them quite yet. Have a Prayens viburnum in the front here that needs to be a few feet back, but there's electrical wiring down there, so that's where it had to go. It's fine, they're easy to prune. Another one over here, and then I'm going to be planting these little two foot by two foot hydrangeas, the game changer hydrangeas intermittently throughout in this space. There'll be so much color. I cannot wait to get that done just to get started on it. Used to have the major wheeler honeysuckles on each side of the steps here. Those are gone now. They're still coming up somewhat. So I need to go and get the rest of those roots out. And I showed in the last video, a couple of gorgeous Borneo giant alocasias that are going to go in place on each side of the steps up here temporarily just for this year i would like to put some nelly stevens hollies up here something with a nice cone shape that's easy to prune and evergreen in the long run that's what i would want but for right now i'm just gonna have fun with it it's going to give more of that instant privacy that i would really like to see onto some tropicals bismarckia looking great pushing out new growth nice and blue that thing took some cold last year so i wasn't sure how it was going to do but it's been doing well the miami planters they are filling out and just looking spectacular. I have these solar lights in here, which do detract from it during the day, but at nighttime, it looks spectacular over here with those lights in there. So I went ahead and I left them. I think that they work out just fine with these sun impatience. These are the variegated electric orange, which both of the ones I planted have much more of a spreading habit than normal. I actually think the solar lights will start to become a little bit more hidden. I may have to make some adjustments. The panels get light. See how they're coming over and trailing over the front of the containers? Uh, there's something weird going on with the variegated orange sun impatience. I had odd growth on them last year and then this year same thing. I'm getting better growth out of them than I did last year but it's not <laughs> like the normal. They're supposed to be big and mounded and instead they're growing out and flowing which is okay. I think it looks cool. But I went easy with the trailers of these containers because I didn't want to hide the pots. These Miami planters, some of my favorites, I think they're really pretty. Have the Creepin' Jenny over the front, which has done a ton of growing. I mean, look at that. They're nearly to the ground. Those are almost 40 inches long from the top all the way down. And easy to maintain. There have been times when they've started to come in and fill in and you couldn't see the container and I can just go in and you just snap the pieces out and it opens it back up. Like over here, you can see how it's starting to close in and you can just kind of shuffle them over to the side too. You can push them back together and it opens it all back up. I really just like the orange with the pink and the green against that nice aqua blue. Looks great. The ones that went in the back, doing well. I should probably talk about like the centerpiece plants, shouldn't I? The Adenidias, doing well. Two new fronds out of each one of them. They're all on drip. So they've been pretty self-sustaining. I've just had to fertilize them, which is no big deal. You know, palm fertilizer, throw some palm gain into the soil and that does most of it. Hit them with a liquid once a month. Beautiful Japanese maple over here. Seems to be keeping its red. I wasn't sure if it was going to because I thought there might be too much shade here, but it's a Crimson Queen lace leaf. See them around the neighborhood and other people's yards in shade and they're keeping their red and that seems to be holding true. Good amount of shade from the mimosa. There's an update I have forgotten to give in every single garden tour. I wasn't sure if this tree was going to survive. I thought it was dead. Again, from that cold that took out the laurel hedge, it just wasn't flushing out, wasn't looking good. This didn't start to leaf out until early June. That's just very late. You, well, it's like three weeks late. Normally by early to mid-May, this starts to push out some foliage. You can see there are some dead branches that need to be cut out, but overall, it's looking good. I think it should still bloom too if it's flushed out all the way to the ends of the branches. I don't know why it wouldn't bloom. It's done a lot of growing. <laughs> I think that when this is done blooming, as soon as it's done blooming this year, it's going to get a major prune. The prune needs to be done basically immediately after they flower because they only bloom on last year's growth. So do that prune when it's done flowering. It'll put out new growth and still have something to flower on next year. As long as things are nice and cool. If it's too hot out, won't be doing things that way. Got the path opened up and cleaned up over here for the doggies. 
Spring Grove arbs temporarily in these containers just to provide some privacy. Something dug up an entire... What? 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 what how? What? Okay, confession. Don't come back here all that often. I... Would, it's an entire shrub just uprooted over here. Yeah, like I said, the dogs had a play date yesterday. I was thinking that they had done really well and hadn't torn things up, but apparently they did a little bit of damage over here in the berm. These are all Hicksius. Planted them in the back, have one on the other side of the steps here. Only reason for doing that was that if we have another bad winter and lose this hedge, I want a backup hedge growing back here so that not just left with zero privacy should the same thing happen again. The Hicks U's, I believe, go 8 to 12 feet. Certain climates, they may go even bigger than that. They stay nice and narrow, so there's be a nice backdrop. And they're a 4 through 9. Those aren't going anywhere if we have a bad freeze. U's grow really, really well where I live. Look at all the caladiums. I was amazed. I dropped these bulbs in the ground and 24, 48 hours later, they are pushing up growth. I wasn't expecting them to come up that quickly, but they were also planted pretty late. You can see there's some bare spots in here where I don't know if a dog, yeah, that's gotta be from a dog. Like you can see where a dog was running through here. It's just the nature of the backyard when you have dogs, that's gonna happen. I'm not stressed out over it. More impatience planted up along this bed over here where all these zingiber, gingers are, zingiber myoga. There is the silver arrow over here and white Feather. The white feathers, the variegations coming out very nicely on them this year. This is their third year, so I had pretty high hopes for them. <laughs> but again, after that winter, I wasn't sure if they were going to come back. Ideally, this entire space would be filled in with them by now, but there's a late start to things. So we had a really cool spring. It really didn't warm up until a few days ago. I'm just happy that they're alive and that they're seemingly doing well. You can see they're growing all the way back there. So there's a empty patch right here another empty patch over there you can order some more and fill that in or just wait and be patient in a year or two they'll fill that whole entire thing in maybe i explained it the ones that are all green are the silver arrow and the ones that have the white outline those are the white feather look at that variegation on that leaf isn't that beautiful that one looks really nice the silver arrows are also a variegated ginger but it takes them a few years to show their variegation and uh, here we are year three you can't really see it. Well, you can kind of see it. It's a very subtle variegation. It's like a green on green. You can see some of that in there. It really just kind of looks like a plant that maybe could use some attention when it comes to their nutrients. There's maybe a better shot right there. When they're more mature and their variegation is looking prime, they look kind of like a muted Alpinia zarumba that's variegated. A variegated shell ginger, that is. Did the caladiums along the backdrop here too. Also plopped in a whole bunch more and patience along this backside to help fill this out a little bit more. It's looking just a little bit too much like a stripe. That was bothering me. Lighting and everything in this entire area is pretty uneven, so there's going to be areas where things are more robust <laughs> and looking better than in other spots, which I'm fine with. I'm just happy to be able to have the color over here. The, what is this, begonia pink teardrops. Planted that a few years ago, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. That thing is spreading. Hasn't gotten big, but again, very cool spring. Noticing there's one back here, right above my finger. That's a good four feet away from where I planted these, so I'd say that those are a good plant to fill in a space. These are really dusty and crusty because I just mulched. Also just power wash, so there's a lot of spray out here. Sorry about that, it just won't rain, so things aren't getting washed off. Time Traveler Hosta, it had put out a leaf that didn't have any variegation on it, which I think I talked about in the last garden tour. I thought about maybe cutting that off, because I didn't know if that was going to be something it was going to consistently keep doing, but it's still putting out new leaves and has the variegation on the new leaves, but it's not as strong as on the older ones. So I'm still wondering if maybe I need to cut that out and let it push out some better leaves. I don't know, the temperatures and everything have also been really inconsistent and that can influence the variegation also. And there's less light now. These came out when there was more light because the maple tree that's right up here, the maple tree hadn't flushed out yet. So there was a lot more sun here, but now it's they're getting shade. So that could have something to do with that as well. Regardless, it's a beautiful hosta, one of my favorites. That's how the variegation stays, that's okay. I did also put a begonia smooch over here, which is just looking great. And these things have only been in the ground for a few days, so I don't expect much out of them. But these are things I hadn't done in the videos and just things I was doing on the side. So I figured I should include them, so it's all up to date get to see the differences between this month and next month. The July and August garden tour usually are very beautiful. It's when the impatience are in their full glory and the gingers have really pushed up. Maybe later in the year this time. I don't know, because again, didn't really start warming up until a few days ago. Obsidian bananas. 
looking good. Not a ton of growth for the same reason as everything else. It's just kind of been hanging out. Pharaoh's mask, elephant ears. These were potted up in this container with this Alexander pump, which is what I should probably be showing because Alexander pump is just looking great this year. Has some burnt foliage. That's what happens when they go from a greenhouse right out into the sun. I just cut these back before they take this big one off to the greenhouse. I have explaining to do. I'll get to that in a minute. And then they push back out with new stuff when they get outside. It's been nice. It's one less plant I have to overwinter. It's been pretty sturdy in these containers. It's an okay elephant ear. Uh, the appeal is somewhat worn off to me, to be honest. I've just said that I think they're just kind of weird. <laughs> there are others that are more pretty and attractive, but when these get bigger and they're in their full glory, they're really neat. Just right now, they're just kind of little and meh. Okay, so here's the explaining part. I'm supposed to do this at the beginning of the videos. St. Louis, that's where I live. Zone 6A, 6B, right on the border. Everything that's in a container, like this right here, these really big containers, that is, all those palm trees go off to be stored in a greenhouse during the wintertime. There's a service here that will take the plants in. They have a great big, huge roof, and they can take really big plants. So all the really big, tall plants, that's where they go. They don't live out here. I always get questions. People are like, how are you growing these things there? I'm not. That, that's not the case. Somebody else takes care of them during the winter. They don't fit in the house. That's, that's not happening anymore. Remember that when you buy an Alexander palm or a queen palm, eventually they're going to outgrow things. This whole area, this is all new. It's all got planted up in the spring. Well, the dune grass isn't new. That's been here. All these eucamus. These are eucamus bicolor sparkling burgundy. They were in a clump at the front of this bed and they just weren't growing because they weren't getting enough light. The house was just barely too far in the way and keeping them shaded. So I finally lifted them, divided them up, and planted them in a row over here where they come around this corner. And I think that the color looks fantastic with the blue. Doesn't that look nice? Really great contrast and they're starting to bloom, which the, the grass is hiding, but those will come up much higher. See why it's called a pineapple lily? That's so cool. I love pineapple lilies especially the sparkling burgundies. So they're one of the ones that gets really tall. This is probably 30 inches tall, and this is just a transplant bulb, so I would expect even more size out of them next year. The more sun they get, the more color that they'll have. You can see where things are getting some more afternoon shade over here. And then this one you can tell is getting the morning sun and the afternoon sun. I don't know if any of the other ones, I don't think, yeah, there's some buds coming up out of some of them. Some little ones starting to poke out from the inside on a few. And this is, oh, I'm so excited about this because that was what I had wanted for years was to just have a nice, nice line, a nice swoop. Okay, Turbo, 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 can we just take it easy on the seashell for a little bit? Sorry. A beautiful swoop around this corner with the blue dune grass in front, that nice red foliage mixed in that has that vase shape to it, that bromeliad shape with the awesome flowers. Uh, uh, turbo, Turbo. With the really cool flowers, these will come up much higher. That's still a very young inflorescence. That will come up right around here, somewhere in there. As long as they have enough light and they're planted deeply, the flower stalks will stay straight up. When they were over here, if there was enough light, so the flower stalks just flopped over. It never looked that great. You could barely see them. It's nice that things are working out the way I'd hoped to with those. More of the Ensep Moreliais back here. One of them had some frying issues <laughs> back in early June, late May, but starting to push out of it and look a lot better. I have a Leucocasia gigantea planted down here that had a lot of dieback on it. This one is called Survivor. It was in a plant haul from Plant Delights. Looked great for a few days and then it went from being in the 60s to being in the 90s and it just went, didn't appreciate that swing. Kind of like the Arborvitae and some of the other plants that are out here. But it's pushing up new growth from the roots. That's all I care about. It's alive, so that's what matters the most. Yeah, this is when things start to get really exciting for the year because it's when the heat rolls in and now that the heat's rolling in, this is when the growth is really going to start to explode on things. These end sets, they should at least triple in size by, well, the end of the year. I was going to say by the end of the month, by the end of July. No, they won't triple, but they should be very big. Very, very big. I also popped an oleander in the ground over here. It's just a, like, annual type, a cheap one from Walmart. It's like the color. It goes well with the dune grass. has a nice beachy vibe to it. The sun impatience whole row of them in the front. Haven't been able to do that in years because of all the shade from the bananas. I had removed a banana clump right here to make room for all this new stuff around this edge. You can see a better shot of how the eucamus swoop around that corner right here. It looks nice. Better view, maybe a different appreciation for it. The bikini teeny colocasias are doing what they do and spreading like crazy. I just came out this morning and started pulling them from inside the sun impatience, which I knew I would have to do. They're going to want to grow through them and inside of them. Very prolific, so pulling them's not a big deal. Just reach down, pull them up, that's it. They can grow as much as they want to in the back and around the garden, just not in the front. 
Speaking of in the front of the garden, I don't know what to do with this. Two weeks ago, I noticed that there's a little tomato plant seedling popping up and I said, you know what, I think I'll go ahead and keep it. I'll just leave it there. And it's, what, I, this is too big. I'm gonna dig that up. I don't want it in the front of the bed. I did so much work this year to be able to have a nice drift, a nice row of these sun impatiens in the front. I don't, that can't be there. Especially when I don't even know what kind of tomato it is. And I can guarantee you that it's only there because one of the dogs ate a tomato and pooped a seed out into their garden beds. These are my dog's butt tomatoes. Could try and dig them up and move them. Not all that motivated to that. I'll probably pull that out. I don't know what happened with the sun impatient. I'm assuming a dog stepped on it or I don't, it, it's just one half of that orange one started to die off and the rest of it's completely fine. I think what I'm going to have to do with that is come in and give that a heavy cutback right through here and that'll push out new growth in the front. It was just this one. All the others have been doing really well. They're a little bit fried because, you know, hot, very hot, which they can take. It's just not when it's been so cool, right? They're not used to just being shocked from the heat, but they'll adjust to it and that won't be an issue moving forward. Musabajus, alive. That's all I wanted <laughs> after that winter. I'm just happy they're alive. Not quite as big as they usually are this time of year, April, May, very cool months, very unusually cool months. So the plants came up very early back in March, but then they just sat still. Not a lot of growth out of them, but that's okay. Again, the heat's here. They'll start to do their thing and get moving. Little Gem Magnolia put out lots of new growth. It's been flowering off and on for the last month or so. The flowers smell so freaking good. I don't know, can I get back here and show them? Trying to make my way back here without smashing the sun impatience. Here we go. There's a flower, it's not opened up all the way. But the little gem, I have noticed to be a much better bloomer than the brackens. As the old flowers fade off and die off, I see new buds start to push up. So I'm getting a succession of flowers, which I really appreciate. Actually done a surprising amount of growing. I wasn't thinking much was going to happen with that this year, since it's first year in the ground, got planted last year. And then again, that horrible winter, but I wouldn't be shocked. I'd say that probably has already put on a good six to eight inches of growth, which again, with the little gems this far north up here in St. Louis, people don't plant a ton of them because they're more of a zone seven. They need to be in a sheltered spot about every 10 years or so. You'll lose about half the plant to a bad freeze. And they tend to just be really, really slow to get going. But this one seems pretty happy. All I've done with it is I put some holly tone around the roots in the spring. Seems to be good. Had some die off from that bad freeze, but otherwise, I think it's okay. The black bamboo that was right here, dug that up in the springtime because I wanted to make room to be able to put in this beautiful row of sun impatience that are now being dwarfed by the tomato and some of the colocasias that I need to pull up. Wasn't the most ideal time to be transplanting a bamboo, but everything back there seems to be good. There's some dead growth in there, but that was already there. That was from the winter time. And in fact, all this right here, that's all new. So since I put it in the ground, it put up some new, uh, canes. I wasn't expecting that to happen. The bamboo don't usually do that this time of year. You know, they send up a bunch of growth and that's generally it, at least with the black one. That's been my experience with this one I've had for the last 15 years. Generally just get one push out of growth from them. Seems to be happy. I'm glad that it did well with the transplant. I'm fine with it growing back along the back of the house, just not in the front of the garden bed. That's been a long time coming. Like four years I've been waiting to get that clump right here, established enough to dig it up and move it. And I'm glad that that worked out well. The banana cannas, I'm currently in the process of digging some of them up just to open some space up here for the gingers that aren't getting enough light because the cannas have filled things in so much. Got some Japanese beetles up there. Not a big deal. I just hit them with DE powder at nighttime and that's doing a pretty good job of cutting back on the damage from them. Stable miners, got some new stuff pushing out with those. Actually really good stuff, look like at this growth nice new growth pushing out of those. That's good. I have been pretty consistent with fertilizing with these because there's so much recovery that they need to do from the winter time. And yeah, look at that. This growth is all the way up here. I can finally go in and cut out a bunch of that old stuff. It still had a little bit of green in it. I don't want to cut it while it was still green, but yeah, that's fully browned out. There's no reason to keep that. You need to open things up for the crown of the plant. The Pharaoh's Mask. I planted a Pharaoh's Mask colocasia in here last year, just out of curiosity to see if it would survive the winter. And about two weeks ago, it started to push up some growth. So it did survive the winter, but I'm still, I'm probably gonna dig it up because it's going to take it a long time to do anything that's impressive or noteworthy. There's so many other gorgeous plants I could put here in the middle. 
Probably one of the Waikikis, I think, is the direction I want to go for that spot. Brenham lilies looking good, nice and big, very robust. Those should start pushing up some big stocks in the next few weeks. These are the Persephone. They have been very, very, very vigorous growers here in Zone 6 and reliable bloomers. So the banana clump, actually looking pretty dang good. It's a little bit bigger than the other one. And that's normal. It's always a little bit bigger than the other one. Oh, the bonfire peaches. Haven't moved those to the driveway yet because there's a leak with the plumbing over here. So I haven't been able to set the drip up for any of this or any of the containers down there. Without water, I don't want to move these to the driveway. They'll just cook over there. So they're just hanging out. And the hydrangea containers, the reason that I was reminded of these is because I've had to water these non-stop. Well, it's really just this one. That one's on drip from a system that runs around the other side of the house. Not enough water pressure on that system to get a drip run to this one. I just watered this like two hours ago. There's a lot going on in these containers and the sun right here just gets super intense. So the last several days they've been wilting down in the afternoon and popping back up around five, something like that. So this one's not looking its best, but it will be okay if we can just hold on for like another two weeks and just deal with the hand watering. Shouldn't be a problem. You have to make sure it gets all the water that it needs. The hydrangeas are the real star over here though, right? Strawberry vanilla hydrangeas. Looking great. Look at the size on these things. Look at that one. It is crooked. I had it straightened out, but it's so heavy though, it just wants to fall forward. The only thing I can think of would be to actually put stakes around the outside of the container and create like a cage for it, which I don't, I don't want to do that. I think that'd look pretty ugly and weird. So I'm just going to let it lean. It won't get stuck like that. It does this every year when it goes into flower. It just seems to be part of growing this type in a container. The strawberry vanillas get Huge. Their flower heads are absolutely massive. They're sticking up right now. Once they open up, they droop and hang. So that's not everybody's thing. I kind of like it. I think it looks neat because it's that nice weeping habit to it. Start off white and then they'll age into a pink with some green. They're really colorful hydrogen. You can actually see like right there, one of them just opened up this morning. Not much to it yet in a couple weeks though. This is just going to be absolutely breathtaking. These are about, I'd say eight feet across each one just covered and white flowers. And at the part you walk through underneath, maybe five and a half feet. So you don't really walk through, they more hit you in the forehead. That's the only downside. Wish they were a little bit taller, but to the top of the growth up there, they're much taller. It's probably eight or nine feet, nice big plants. I should show with this one. Yeah, I was gonna talk about what they're underplanted with, but I don't think that makes sense to do with the one that's really thirsty. Electric orange sun impatience and uh, purple candy sun impatience. I think that those paired really well together. I hadn't tried the purple candy before. They're new to me. Multiple tones and those flowers. And I think that they both go really well with the green on the Ipomia. These are the Sweetheart Caroline. No, Sweetheart Lime. Car it's, a, it's a proven winner's sweet potato vine. Those ones with the heart-shaped leaves. I like the shade of green that those are with the pots. Looks nice. I think I talked about the last garden tour. Only did two in the containers this year. Didn't do any petunias or anything like that because by the end of the season, you can't see the pots and I want to be able to see the pots. I like the way they look. I think that the color is really nice and hiding them just, it doesn't make sense. That and I planted larger annuals this year, which cost more money. So just had to make some decisions of what to keep and what to not keep and reducing a few petunias that made it possible to put in some bigger plants. I'd say that's a fair trade-off. Everything is so cooked from the weekend. It was so hot and extremely dry. You can see like the flowers bleached out over here. These looked spectacular 48 hours ago. Oh, well, that's gardening. They'll flush back out and look good again. The Tradescantia nanooks so though, look at how much those are filling in. Tons of growth on those. And the ones that are per perennialized, <laughs> the ones that survived the winter last year, they're pushing up from the back. Wasn't expecting them to do that. So there's a clump of them right there and there's another smaller clump that's still tucked down and underneath. Those overwintered here in zone six with maybe some protection. I mulched this ginger pile and the sable miners, which you can't see right now if they're hidden. There's one, it's right in there. But I don't bring the mulch that far forward onto this bed. So I guess it's just a nice warm spot. The purple hearts, the palettas, they usually overwinter for me without any issue. So I'm not shocked that the Nanooks did the same thing. Happy that they did so well. And I like that they're further towards the front of the bed this year. It'll start to droop and come over the patio. That'll look really neat. I have an Alpinia that I just popped in the ground here and it's really liking that spot. It curls up a little bit in the afternoon, but that's what they do. Nothing surprising about that. It opens back up when the sun gets off them. Have some Heliconia chocanianas that are quorum types. 
back here. I had to place them pretty strategically because of where the sun will actually hit. Right in front of these gingers, these are flaming torch gingers, which should be about a foot or two taller than this this time of year, but again, just haven't had the heat. Normally these will be six to seven feet tall and that casts a good amount of shade right here. So it just didn't make sense to plant a whole entire row of the heliconias. So I spaced them out into spots where I thought that they'd be able to get some morning and afternoon sun. Seems to be working out just fine because they're all pushing up new flowers. That's the telltale sign they're getting enough light. Threw a Chinese sand palm in the ground right next to that more to block the container of the Adenidia palm, which is just like, I love this palm tree. Love the chunky trunk that it has on there. A couple of sun impatience plants in the base. I did have to mulch this because the root ball is lifted. Not a lot, but a smidge, and it's hard to water without having runoff. Throw in some mulch in there, that's done the trick. I can water this really heavily and there's no soil running over the edges. This is a Limezinger xanthosoma. One of my favorite types of elephant ears because they have that nice chartreuse color, kind of like the Ipomia, and a more arrow-shaped leaf on them. These are still pretty small. These should probably be about 30 inches, 24 to 30 inches by the end of the season. That's what I'm hoping for anyways. One of my favorites, nice, thick, girthy, healthy Adenidia palm. Everything over here is doing pretty well. Heptacodium has some buds that it's holding onto. Otherwise, I, actually, I would like to do a prone where some of it's hanging over the front, but... I don't want to lose the bud, so I guess it can stay for right now. It's hanging over my summer crush, candy crush, hibiscus that's in here. It's a, just a really nice bubblegum, vibrant pink hibiscus from Proven Winners. Has some great height on it. That's easily four feet, I'm guessing, just because there's a slope here, so it could be a little bit under four feet. I don't know. I planted last year, you know how those hibiscus are, the machetos, the ones that die down to the ground? The first year you plant them, they don't really grow unless you plant them very, very early in the season. Even still, they usually just kind of maintain their size that year. So you always have to wait a year or two for them to really put on some size. This one's definitely doing that. It's getting some good size on it. I would like to go down and talk some more about the other palms, but is it bothering anybody else that I have these dried up fronds over here. I think it's just one of those things where I hadn't gotten a really close look at it, but then I saw it while we were talking about it. And now I just really want those to be gone and have a better look at what this plant looks like when it doesn't have dead fronds in it. There we go. That's much better. I could probably cut this one out too, but it's still got a lot of green in it. So I'm going to leave it. This isn't supposed to be a vlog. I'm not supposed to be doing work, but there are just a few things that were bugging me. Sometimes things just end up standing out and bug you when you see them through the camera that I don't notice when I'm out here vlogging. So I just would feel better moving on, knowing that I had handled a few things. Tomatoes, good. The, uh, oh, you know, I had Tradescantia nanux planted in intervals in here, and it looks like one of them is gone. Huh, don't know what that's about. Something probably ran over it or ate it. Of course, by something probably ran over it, I mean Turbo. Maybe dropped a ball in there. Did that happen, BB? Did you destroy some plants? You're pretty good at that. One of his many strengths and talents, the Queen Palms. Doing well. Both of them have pushing out some new fronds. I top dressed these very, very, very heavily this year with a nice rich soil, plenty of palm gain, and the liquid fertilizers to get them moving and they are. Had to cut a couple of old fronds off them, which is normal. It happens. They're young. They don't hold on to their fronds as long, start to yellow. Cut those out. Robolini just flushed out with a lot of new growth, and it's looking good. A little bit frazzled from the wind, and it went through it this spring, or <laughs> two weeks ago, really. I had to keep that one out in the driveway because it had scale and mealybug on it, so it was being treated in a safe place where nothing would interfere with the pollinators or the flowers. Every time I did that, I had to lay it down on the ground and pick it up and lay it down so it get, it went through the ringer, but it's looking much better now. This is just kind of the joys of the Robolini palm. Seem to deal with that every year with it. Again, same thing, top dressed it with really, really, really nice organically rich soil blend, the palm gain fertilizer, and it's been getting some liquid. And it seems to be appreciating it, pushing out new growth. Foliage needs to darken up some, but I don't expect a ton from the first flush of foliage that I get from the palms after they've been in the greenhouse. Somebody asked me if these palms were dying not too long ago, and I, which is fair. I mean, look at them. But nope, these are the Gossia palms. It's just that transplant greenhouse shock situation. Go from darker conditions to being out in the full sun. Generally lose whatever fronds they have, but then they push out new ones and the new ones look very nice. Another queen palm over here, pushing out some more growth. I cleaned the trunk up on this one. The old boots, the sheaths were going down too far. It was bugging me, so I cut out 
three of those just to open it up some more. Something I like to have open and clear. Something I forgot to mention in the last garden tour when I talked about this planter right here was what I had what I had planted in it. It talked plenty about what was in the front. There are three different types of verbena here. I have the purple and the pink and then the apricot, peachy cane is what that one is. They're starting to fill in nicely together with the Musa of Florida in the middle. What are you? Supertunia persimmon. Supertunia persimmon. Couple of impatiens on each side. There are some caladiums that are coming up from the inside that were just ones that I had planted last year that are returning. There's a little bit of growth from the ginger, the curcumus. He's got transplanted from a different container, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago. Just his little bulbs through those in there. They're starting to do their thing. What I forgot to mention was what's in the back of the container. So this is a hot pink shell ginger, an alpinia. It's starting to adjust to its new life in this container, have some new growth coming out of it. And then I also have the Colocasia uh, tea party, teacups. It's a very small coffee cup with a, more of a reddish foliage on it when they get mature. Seen a reflexa and the backdrop over there. And then have the, well, what was formerly the dump garden. Now, actually, yeah, the sun is like right in the lens. Oh, that does look good on camera, though. It's kind of blinding for me. I don't know we'll come back to this, but the, that looks pretty good. This has mostly just been an area where I've tossed whatever I wanted in the ground. Mostly just things for the pollinators. And this year I decided to dress it up some more. Got some arbs planted in the back. They aren't looking too hot, but they're actually looking a little bit better. It, it's that cold heat thing we had last month. Arbs don't like that, as, as you can see. Always best to try and get arbs in the ground in the early spring or in the late summer into the fall when temperatures are more stable. Otherwise, you have to deal with this kind of garbage, but they don't really sell a ton of them here those times of years. And it mentioned when I talked about planting these up that I uh, have them staggered. Doesn't really show on camera. It might show when they're older. It's even hard to tell when you're standing right here, but this one and that one are pushed closer to the fence, and then this one and the other one are pulled out further. I think they look nice when they have more of that zigzag pattern to them. Have some iris over here. This is a Ming iris, Ming's treasure iris. It's a newer hybrid that gets really, really big and wide, has flowers that stand up nice and tall on them. The blue jangles hydrangeas, they're the blue ones right there. So pretty, loving the blue jangles. And then there's lots of penstemon lavender and little things tucked around and planted in here as well underneath the apple espaliers. This is a honey crisp and then there is a gala down on the other end there. I got the potting bench set up over here with just what's left to plant or just some things that I like to keep over here where I can keep a better eye on them. This is that Lil Wags trachycarpus. Love this one. That's from Plant Delights. I can see the sprinklers need to head over here. Some things are looking kind of thirsty, of course, since I have the camera out. Look great until I bring the camera out. A couple more Musa Floridas over here need to be planted. Feel extra awesome. Nothing spectacular, just some annuals. The Musa Floridas are pretty cool. Everything else, though, is just things I've left over to work into some planters around the garden. I do have some of the aeroids stuck back here. They seem to be liking this spot. Not that easy to see them, but it's been the best spot I can find for them where they're safe from the dogs and they're getting nice filtered light and the sprinklers, I have misters out here that can hit them. The VGI in particular seems to be liking it. It's pushed out two new leaves since I brought it out here just a little over a month ago. So it's really doing some growing. That Warkianum, it's, I mean, well, it's, there's not much to see of it. And that's for a reason, because it's thrown a fix. It's a diva plant. Albo, looking beautiful. I need to move this. This should not be here. That's going to attach itself to the trunk of that windmill palm. But sure, yeah, that would look cool if the Albo was growing up the trunk of the windmill palm. But it's going to grow way faster than windmill palm. And I like these windmill palms outside till it's like 15 degrees. And that's not going to work for the Albo. And I'll just die if I do that. Variegated Epipernum pinnatum over here. Just hanging out. Need to get that up onto a new pole. I have some other plants over here that need a repot. It's been the trend this spring has been getting a lot of repots done. Oh, and this is all new. Unless you watch the videos on a regular basis, in which case you're probably sick of seeing this area because <laughs> I just did this, but this is the tortoise garden. This area was a complete and total disaster. It was a dumping ground. It was a pit. I had lots of containers over here from where I used to grow veggies and cut flowers. Bedded all that out, built a little wall, put some rocks in. This is more, it's more like a playpen for my tortoise for, I don't know if I have to run some quick errands or I'm not going to be around, but I want him to be able to hang out outside. This is where he goes. He's inside right now. Otherwise the tortoise has full range of the backyard as long as there's somebody around to check in on him because he will dig under that fence if he's left alone for too long. The tie. Again, if you keep up on the videos, then you know what's going on here. This has grown a ton. That's generally always the case. That's always the story with the tie. It's a grower. I had to tilt it and find a nice angle to keep it at because it wasn't working with the fountain over here. The fountain 
is looking great. In the last video, I left off with this thing not really running. It was running, but the pump I had in there just wasn't strong enough. I lifted this up higher so that more of the pot is exposed and uh, that needed more power from a pump to push the water up higher. So new pump came and the flow is looking good. It's very pretty. Have a coconut with a little sprout hanging out up top. This is all lit up from down here and there's lights on the inside too. So at night, the top of this, those glass shards, they're not shards, they're soft, but glass chunks, they light up and it looks really, really pretty. In the evening, the ginger planters, they're starting to finally push up some new buds. I wasn't really certain what they were going to do because since I got these back in, I don't even know, March, something like that. They haven't done much, but it hasn't been warm. But all it took was a few days of warmth and lots of new buds coming out. So I'm looking forward to seeing lots more of the mini flowers on there. This is cute. The mini Alpinia, that's so nice. It's a fun looking flower. This planter, it's, I'm really liking it. I like what's going on, but it is very full. I did, I, that's what I was going for. So I suppose that's all right, but <laughs> there's still several months of growing left to do. So I may end up having to come in and pull some things out and that's okay. Verbenas are still doing their thing over the front. Now that it is actually officially summer, I don't know how much longer these verbena are going to do well in this container because the sun has shifted. So this isn't getting that much sun anymore past like one o'clock in the afternoon. But I'm just wait and see what they do. If they start to shrivel and not look great from not getting enough sun, sun? <laughs> from not getting enough sun, they can always just cut them back, pull them out, and pop them someplace else. That's a nice thing this year with this maple tree having that big prune. I have so much more sun to work with than I used to. So there are lots of places to pop verbena. I love verbena, but don't grow a ton of it because without the sun, I just have issues with it rotting, but I, I don't think that that's going to be a problem this year, except for maybe right here. All the places I could have put it, I stuck it in a spot where maybe it won't do great. We'll find out. So far, it's doing really well. One of these caladiums, this is one that's been around for a few years now. You may remember it. I believe this one is called Raid, nope, not Radiance, Spring Fling. One of my absolute favorite caladiums has a rather thin leaf on it. You can see my finger moving around behind it, but the green veining on that white and pink looks so neat. And this leaf right here with that splash of green, that just looks awesome. This has done a lot of growing. So last year it didn't do a ton. The year before was its first year that I planted and it didn't do a lot either, but unassisted because I didn't know that it was even in here. I kind of remembered, but I just wasn't expecting it to come back. I didn't know that the bulb had remained in the container during its winter storage off of the greenhouse. So hadn't done anything special, like made sure to fertilize or anything but i guess the entire container's been getting some fertilizer so never mind that's my whole point there is i feel like so far this year it only being june almost july it's already done as much growing as it did last year and the year before it's be interesting to see how much more growth comes out of it the tropical storm calicaceas they're starting to get some more mature looking leaves what a neat leaf look at that the way the sinus is all clamped in and funky looking this one's doing that too they aren't really supposed to do that but it looks neat, and I think it's just because they're so young and immature. As these grow larger, that should open up and look more normal. At least I hope so. If not, I'm kind of okay with it because it looks pretty cool. Persian shield in the back on both sides. Those have really, really bushed out. They're getting nice and thick. I think that was a good choice to put in the back of this container because it has some shininess, some reflection, some color, and they should hold up well to the sun impatience. These sun impatience are going to keep growing and getting bigger. And those should keep coming up higher and I don't have to worry about them getting choked out. Caladium bicolor back here, looking thick. Is it the size of the leaf on this caladium? That's freaking massive. Again, th this is just like with the spring fling. It's just one that I've had in the container for a few years. So this is just a nice, large, established, mature bulb. It's not the most colorful leaf that you would want from one of the bicolors, but it's freaking huge for a caladium. That's a massive leaf. I hope that it keeps putting up some more. I don't really know if it will just because all this stuff's been planted there and the sun has shifted. If I'm not seeing more growth or anything in the next few weeks, then I will probably come in here and lift that out and find a better spot for it. I just, I'd rather not because it's established itself into this container. That's something that's been fun with these containers that I have sent away and stored is that there are some plants, typically mostly just caladiums, that I cut them back and when they return in the spring, the stuff I cut back starts growing in. So it's like having little miniature gardens in the containers. That's typical with plants that move into the house too, but 
I pull a lot of whatever is under plants in a container out of the container when I bring them inside because I want all my watering and all my efforts to go towards the main focus of the container, like in this one with this double trunked Adenidia palm. I've been standing here underneath it talking about this whole time and haven't even bothered to show you the actual palm tree. Because I go heavy with the under plant. Oh, oh, hold on, look at that one. That's a cool leaf. Look at that. Really colorful. It's almost like it tried to revert and then couldn't pull it off and splashed or painted with different colors. That's really cool. I was supposed to be talking about the adenidia. It's great. It's adenidia. New growth coming out of it. I can see that there's some old leaf bases that I could probably pull from here. I don't usually like to do that unless they're really loose. These are loose enough. That'll come right off. Good, that's satisfying. I love pulling those things off. Revealing the nice fresh green crown shaft on the palm trees. This has done a good amount of growing too. I think that's just something I end up saying about pretty much everything out here. Plants have been good. They've been growing. Some winter damage, that's to be expected, especially after the winter that we had. The bamboo, it's just bambooing. It's not dead. I have some dead canes that I need to clean out from winter time in this one. Then the hot tub wall, this also all got cleaned up and freshened up and rearranged when I did the tortoise garden over here. Some of the plants that are over here are only over here because I have lots and lots of drip heads that run around here on little short hoses. So if I have a plant that is new or needs to be repotted, I've been keeping it over here just so I can pop it right onto a drip head very easily. This Waikiki Colocasia, I just love. That's just hanging out there because it's on a drip head and it was way too hot over the weekend to be planting anything in the ground. There's some curcumas that are doing the same thing and some heliconias as well. A lot of this stuff is going to be moved over time and I'll be putting new things in place and just cycling things through. Oleander hanging out next to a little coconut in the ice bucket with some vinca. And of course the Eureka palm. One of my favorites that I have out here Every year I keep saying that I think it's getting too big to go into the garage. I'm gonna have to start cutting down some of the larger trunks, but every year it just seems to be making it and doing okay. It always scorches when I move it outside for the winter, whether I harden it off or whether I don't harden it off. So I just don't really bother hardening it off. And it's reached a point where it's flush out with a lot of new growth. So I can come in and cut out all that old stuff now. I'd say that there should be plenty of good green foliage in there now for a nice heavy prune. One thing I'm noticing that's a big improvement this year over years past is that this is getting gorgeous, gorgeous color on it. It's getting that Ludia, the Ludicens, right? Golden cane palm, golden butterfly palm. They have that name for a reason because they have vibrant, beautiful yellow growth on them when they're getting proper lighting. That maple had gotten pretty big and the way it was shading things, there wasn't quite enough light to get that color on there. They still got some color, but just not this much. It wasn't this intense. And having more light during the day is also going to help keep it from having stretched leggy growth on it, which is great because I'm not trying to get this one to grow any bigger. <laughs> this is big enough. It has to fit in the garage. When it gets too big, it won't be a tragedy or anything like that. Just the really big trunks that are in here, I'll just cut them back and it'll keep doing its thing. I should be able to keep moving this in and out for a pretty long time. I mean, heck, I've already had it for like probably eight years, something like that. I think I got this in 2015, just a little guy, like a seven gallon container. Yeah, they do a good amount of growing. One of my favorite palms, another Caladium down here. Can't remember the name, it's either White Christmas or maybe Radiance, I don't know. It's been a few years since I planted those. It's coming up, looking pretty nice. Have the Porphyra right next to it that I think was getting too much sun. I might need to rotate this container so that this side is over on this end or even the back where the front's not getting as much sun. I don't want that plant to fry, but this is where it was last year and it was okay. And I don't think the maple provided any shade to the very front of the container. Have some nice looking inflorescence coming up here on the curcuma. This one is sweet memory, distant memory, I can't remember. One of those overwintered these in the garage, just in a dry pot, splash some water on them on rare occasions and now that's doing its thing. Love the curcumas, also have a red or an orange one back there that's coming up. Not quite as progressive as that one, so no flowers on it just yet. And then the deck planters right here. They're looking pretty good. Unfortunately, the flowers are starting to close because the sun has moved off the patio, but I had to wait for the sun to move off the patio in order to get better shots of everything. Hibiscus, tricolor, also called Love on the Beach, Tequila Sunrise. There are a lot that have the similar flower to this one, a very prolific bu bloomer. 
words. Words are hard today. Very prolific bloomer. Made a nice centerpiece. I don't use hibiscus as centerpieces in these because of that maple tree. This is getting enough sun where that's working out just fine. The annuals are doing their thing in the front. Two petunia persimmons here on each side of this ipomia. Some damage on the foliage. Haven't seen bugs chewing on it, so I'm not sure what that's from, but it's one of those things you have to keep an eye and start to get holes in the leaves. Pay close attention. Watch out for critters. Variegated sea hibiscus looking great. Isn't it beautiful? Love this plant. This is getting a repot this week. It needs it badly. It's in an espoma mix that just drains way too fast. It's not holding on to any moisture. I have to water this plant constantly. Because of that, I'm not getting much growth out of it. That is a plant that should be growing quickly and swiftly, no problem. But it's not going to grow swiftly and quickly if I can't keep it hydrated. So getting new soil in there. Have a nice, beautiful heliconia down here that a friend, one of y'all from YouTube, sent to me. Looks like it's going to have some gorgeous flowers on it. Can't wait to see what those look like when they open up. Haven't planted up the foot yet. I have a plant for it, but it's in the mail. I don't know when it'll be here. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get the plant in there. There's been a lot of shipping delays this year. Has anybody else noticed that? Probably just the place that I've been ordering from. I've been ordering a lot of things. And I'll be like, oh, it'll be shipped out in a week. And then like three weeks later, I'm getting an invoice saying that it's on the way. I don't know what that's about. Really is fine because I've been busy, so it can take its time. This is that whole area. This is getting cleaned up and replanted sometime this week. I'm going to be doing a lot of repots and a lot of planting next week. So that's why there's still some mess on the ground from when I redid all of this last week. I just didn't see a reason to come in here and power wash and blast and clean up. I'm going to be hauling dirt and debris and everything in and out of here. I figured I'd just wait and do it all one time instead of having to do it twice, right? Longilobas. Uh, there's not much to say. They look cool. Haven't done a ton of growing. That's okay. Wasn't really expecting them to. They're just hanging out pretty sturdy. Oh, uh, well, is. I have had to spray these for spider mites. I actually, I ran out of soaps and I ran out of neem and I didn't have any peppermint. Well, this doesn't happen very often. I always have some sort of arsenal lined up for bug control, but I didn't have anything. I noticed the spider mites on this one right here and I was in my house digging around and I went, oh, you know what? Parrot cage cleaner. <laughs> Poop off. It's just essential oils. If it's safe for the birds, it's going to be safe for the plants. I sprayed the leaves down and I let it sit for about five or ten minutes and then I rinse it off only because it is also, it's made for getting bird poop off of things, which means it's very strong. I imagine if I had left it on the foliage, it would have just destroyed the leaves, but it didn't. It's been over a week and no signs of mites, so I'd say that that did the trick. Not necessarily something I would suggest everybody else do. This stuff isn't cheap. It's kind of pricey, so it would make more sense to make your own blend with some peppermint and rosemary oil, but that's what I had and it worked. Surprised we're dealing with spider mites this time of year to be dealing with them, period. But again, the dry air. It's apparently I live someplace with dry air now. Like 70 to 85% humidity. It's not exactly dry, but it's not as humid as what I'm used to out here. I don't think there's anything left over here. Pretty sure from this space and on. I think that's everything. Oh, the agave potato, my variegated potato. Looking good. Hasn't put out any new growth, but I wasn't expecting it to. Same thing with the cactus. It's straightened itself out, seems to be enjoying life, looking much better than it did when I got it potted up and it was just limp and saggy and sad looking. It's like the beginning of a Blue Chew commercial. The uh, beach planters, these are, I think these are my favorite thing I did this year. And my battery's dying. Okay, I'm gonna reset the batteries. Gassia palms, that's G-U-A-S-S-I-A, -S -S buccaneer palms. Don't know which type. There are only three possibilities and I can't really get it narrowed down. So I'm just going with buccaneer palms, gassia palms, weird looking palms. Don't think they're supposed to be quite <laughs> this um, spindly. Spindly to an extent, yes, but not quite this much. It's just how they were brought to me. I didn't pick them out. They were looking pretty crummy. This one over here particularly, but they're all pushing out new growth. The more new growth that comes out of them, the better that they are looking. These are probably my favorite containers that I've done out here this year. Instead of filling these pots up with tons of impatience and petunias like I usually do, went with some vinca and white sand, some shells, toss a little sand castle inside of there, some coconuts there, just supposed to look like little beach scenes, like little chunks of the ocean. The roeos are doing well in here as well. I wasn't sure if that was gonna be the case. Sometimes when it gets really hot with all this pavement right here, I've had issues with roeos, but they seem to be happy. They seem to be doing really well. Look at how great they look with these little catharanthus, the bluish violet ones that are over there. I think those look really great together, especially with the shell and this tattoo orange vinca in the middle. One thing that has bothered me with these containers is I only had one tattoo orange vinca and I cannot find them for sale 
anywhere. They're gone. A lot of the nurseries just don't have much as far as annuals go anymore this time of year. So this one over here doesn't have that orange in the middle, but it's okay. I'm just learning to live with it and accept it. It's fine. These are the Cora Cascade Strawberry F something hybrid. They're trailing vincas that are coming over the fronts of these containers. They are filling out more than what I'm used to. When Usually when I plant a Cascade vinca, they tend to just hold their shape and go straight down. I didn't expect them to bush out quite as much. So you can't see as much of that beautiful white sand in the containers. And that's okay. It's easy enough to go through and pull them just like I've been doing with the Creeping Jenny when I feel like they're starting to fill in too much and can't really see the sand. I've just been pulling them together and that opens things up and exposes the sand so you get that beachy effect when you're looking at them. In front of those containers I have two Heliconias, Chocanianas. Supposedly, I don't think they really are, but that's what they were sold as. One of my favorites though, just a very vigorous, colorful, happy looking Heliconia. Don't know if I'm going to keep these containers right here, but it's where I set them when I unboxed them and did that video and it's where they've stayed. I think they look good there for now. Here's a plant there's been an update on in a while. This is a Dracaena Draco. Some sun damage, which just happens when you move plants outside sometimes. Thought it was getting enough shade, but apparently not. It's not a plant that there's ever going to be much to update on because it doesn't grow all that quickly. It just is one of those ones that just kind of hangs out, kind of like a ponytail palm. I can come in here and get these old leaf bases out now. That's always fun to do. It's great to be able to get in here and expose that new fresh trunk. Yeah, see, doesn't that look cool? I love the trunks on these. Trunks are one of my favorite parts. New growth has come out a little spindly. I think it's because I moved them out probably at an improper time. I maybe shouldn't have moved these out right as they're pushing out new growth. I probably should have waited for that to open up or Perhaps even if I could have predicted it, moved them out right beforehand, but it should be okay. They'll harden off. I have it tucked back here where it's getting more shade, partially from this big palm frond up here. I don't know if I emphasize that enough when talking about these Gossia palms. The fronds on these things are freaking huge. Look at how long that is from this little, like, four foot, five foot trunk over here, which I'm going to partially attribute. That's why things get messy out here. I'll partially attribute that to them probably having sat in a warehouse where there's light. It has a translucent roof where these plants get stored, the greenhouse. It's not bright, intense lights. So that's going to lead to longer stretched out growth. That could have something to do with it. I'm just going to have to wait and see what the new growth looks like. Now that they're getting more sun to really get a gauge on that. They have really fine fronds. Like the way they move in the wind. The newer growth is holding a deeper green, which I like. These kind of have that sickly plant that's been moved around a lot, has some cold damage look to them. Looking forward to those being done and off the plants. Then I have these two ginger planters here. It's going to be hard to hear me, so I'm standing right next to the fountain. Just some Alpinia zarumbats with some of these Supertunia persimmons, some orange sun impatiens, Supertunia vista bubble gums. I like the way these look, and it was really just an excuse to have a place to put some spotlights to light the dolphins up at night. It looks really cool having those lit up in the evening time. The wax myrtle doing great. Lots of growth on there. The bayberry, not wax myrtle. Close enough, similar enough. It's a close look at those Borneo giants that are going to go on the ground. Isn't this a neat leaf? Has some variegation on it. It's an older leaf and none of the new ones have any of that on there. So variegation or damage of some kind. It doesn't have any texture to it. It doesn't seem like there's burn or anything of the sorts. That's why I assume it's just some random variegation. But again, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if that's not holding through, holding through, holding true on the newer growth. It has nothing to do with why I bought them. I just like them. Borneo Giants, these get massive. These are still babies. So I have a lot of grown through. Those are going to look really great up there on top of that hill. Not much to talk about over here yet. I think by the next garden tour, this Lespedeza Thumbergii should have flowers on it, maybe, or be getting ready to. This is not the original one that's been in the videos in the past. The original one was over here and it grew out and all over the patio to like right here. I went and I dug that up and I let some offshoots stay further in the back so that it can still grow and do its thing closer to the wall without being in the way of the pathway. Just couldn't bring myself to get rid of it because the pollinators absolutely love that plant. I don't want to get rid of something that flowers so profusely and that the bees enjoy so much. It's the bonsai. It's not doing much growing because it's a bonsai, but there it is. Lovely Japanese maple. I forgot to mention when I was talking about these containers over here that one of the catharanthus, it didn't make it. Don't know why, just didn't. That's okay. There's others in here. It looks fine. Something I just noticed over the weekends, maybe that heat that came through 
fried it. There was another plant in here that I forgot to, here we go. I haven't been showing this one because I've been waiting to make sure it was going to be a survivor before showing it. It's a special plant. Look, isn't it beautiful? Look at those leaves. So this was brought out of tissue culture. And whenever I'm pulling a banana out of tissue culture, I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> Any plant out of tissue culture, it takes a long time to transition them out of their auger into a nice sagam and perlite blend and then into a nice coarse material and to get them rooted without having a major dieback. That was the case with the Moose of Florida's. Wanted to wait till those were bigger to talk about them. This is a Musa no-no, which is a newer banana, newer-ish. There's some controversy behind them. It's mostly misinformed uh, or um, I don't think misinformed is the right way to put it. Not a lot of information period on them. You have to do a lot of, a lot of deep diving to get down to the origins of these plants as it grows more and there's more to say about it. I'll talk about it some more. It's basically a rojo or a zebrina, which is a type of banana that has a green and red variegation on the leaves. Very similar to that, except this is green and very vibrant pink variegation. It's a sturdy banana too. It's not like the Floridas or the II's, A-A-I-I, however you want to say it. And I would imagine that these will be heavy in production in probably the next three to five years if they work out well commercially as far as being able to produce them in bulk, which I have a feeling that they will. But I'm excited to keep working with this one and to grow it this year and to be able to talk about it. And I'm even more excited to hopefully be seeing that plant all over the place in the next few years. I have a feeling it's going to be very popular or a complete dud. Probably going to be one or the other not a plant that i see in in between with i think that's is that everything that's everything oh no 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 the orchid and i do still have some house plants in the garage i hadn't brought some of them out yet because they have adhered themselves to the wall <laughs> the epiprenum pinatum the cibu blue cibu blue it is like almost up to the ceiling really stuck to the wall and i think it looks kind of cool so man to believe in it and just let that plant grow through the walls of the garage or cut it and root those parts that are on the wall into a new container. Vanilla orchid's gotten tangled up. It's grown all around the shelves. There's just, just some fine detail work I need to do in there along with getting some of the little alocasias out. For the most part, everything's been moved out at this point. This right here, do you, do you remember this? This is from like a week ago. Thought I should give an update. This is the Phalaenopsis that uh, produced a bud down inside of the moss. So I took a blade and cut a hole out just out of curiosity see what would happen. I assumed that that would just rot away and blast and die. But it's been over a week and it's actually plumping out. And that one flower may end up opening. I see lots and lots of little buds on the inside though that I doubt will because it doesn't seem to want to push out any further. It's just kind of hanging smashed on the inside. This is all just for jits and shigs, right? This needs to be repotted obviously, but I just wanted to cut the hole in see what was going to happen. Cause I knew that if I tried to pull this from the container, then I was going to lose the flower completely. And I haven't had this one bloom for me yet. And I really want to see the flower. This one's supposed to have a really nice vibrant orange flower. It's from Norman's. They have really nice, decent orchids. I'm just assuming that this is over potted. There must be a decent amount of growth down there inside the moss. I don't know why else it would have put a bud all the way down there, but it did and it's been fun to watch. It's hard to get it on camera because these colors tend to all blend together, but the spike, the bloom spike that's in here, it really is like wrapped and coiled and everything right in the spots. I don't, can't imagine that that's going to straighten itself out. But again, if just this one opens, I'll be happy and then I can cut the rest of that off and go ahead and give it a repot. I just, I really want to see that flower. So far, been a fun year. I've gotten a lot done already. Have the Fort McNair chestnut back there. I forgot to talk about that. Talked about the plant when I got it, but didn't mention it's planted back there. That'll form a nice canopy right in here, a big round, just beautiful, more of an umbrella shaped plant with gorgeous pink flowers in the springtime. Oh, and the magnolia. There's a magnolia over here too. Sapling magnolia. This is the Cape Paris. Wanted to make sure there's an update on that one because I've talked about it enough that people want to know what's going on with it. This thing, very vigorous. It was just a stick when I got this last fall. We had a bad winter. Well, we had a bad few days in winter, record-breaking bad days, and I didn't expect it to live since it was just a stick. Not only did it live, but it's flowered abundantly, held onto its flowers for a long time, and it's just flushing out with lots and lots and lots of new growth. Turns out to be a very vigorous magnolia. You feel better now, Turbo? You had to do that right while I was filming, huh? Uh, we're over here, needle palms. Not much to say about them this time of year. They're growing. They showed their flowers in the last tour. They're just 
doing their thing, being nice big bushy needle palms. Lots of fresh foliage starting to push out on the inside of the croton and another set of blooms coming through on the Bougainvillea. This one is a mixture. It's a braid, so there's a combination of these. Deeper magenta pink with my favorite of the Bougainvilleas, which is the ones that have this nice pinkish flower that are mixed with the orange. It's really corally color. Always fun when they drop their old flowers and start to push out new ones, because sometimes they can be difficult to get to rebloom. But with the temperature fluctuations and the very dry weather we've been having, this one's been doing pretty well. It's been enjoying the randomness, the chaos that's been going on. Beautiful plants. Right, that actually should be everything. I know the hanging basket looks like trash. I just need to get a ladder out and pull it down. Those are all spring annuals. Wasn't expecting those to look good into the heat of the summer. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Get a lot done in the month of June. I feel pretty good about June. Got several hundred annuals in the ground, probably a few thousand if I'm actually counting annuals, but lots of annuals, lots of perennials. Tons of mulch regraded part of the yard. Started a whole new garden bed that extends from there all the way down over there. That was a big project. I'm sorry I couldn't film it, but I just don't want the camera over there because it films directly into the neighbor's house and that feels disrespectful and weird to me. So for the most part, what I'm doing down there, I'm just doing like little before and afters and close-ups. That'll get better whenever their construction gets done. It's not bothering me too much, but it is unfortunate when I'm doing a really big project to not be able to film the process. I think it's more fun to be able to take everybody along for it, but well, maybe I'll figure out a different routine or schedule or find some better angles to work with up there as I got all the shrubbery and stuff on the hill. Then I got this entire area gutted out, put up a whole new garden along this hill and run some more irrigation. Everything's just constantly changing and improving, which is also the case for all. That's why this mess is over here. I've been working on repotting with the constantly changing and improving trying to get better soil into the pots on a lot of these plants that I had mentioned, just not liking the Espoma mix. Haven't been seeing good growth or water retention with the plants. Some of these plants, I'm having to hold the hose on them for like five minutes. The mule palms, this one over there, I had to hold the hose over that thing for, I think it was like three or four minutes and then I, was, I got bored. So I just left the hose in the pot and walked away, came back 10 minutes later and finally the water wasn't flushing through crazy fast. It just, isn't really working for me. I know it's a great mix, so maybe it's a climate thing or wherever the batches are coming from. I don't know. I'm not trashing Espoma. I like the brand. Just want to get some of these plants that need some more moisture retention into fresh mix. And a lot of them, it's been a few years anyways, and it's time to repot them as it is. That's why I sort of a chaos pile over those my repotting materials. So I still have several big ones I want to get repotted. My main focus has been getting perennials and annuals into the ground and into their containers before doing the repots because those are the plants that are the most vulnerable, right? want to get those planted before the crazy intense heat rolls in. I'm down to just a few shrubs, got to grow a cart with some stuff in there. Those are fun, easy projects. Should be able to get all those things done at the same time. Yeah, I think I said I was going to go. Didn't I say I was going to go? I don't know. Oh, and the freckles. Oh, I do always forget to talk about freckles. People have asked, where's freckles? How's freckles doing? Freckles is great. Here's freckles. Had a big prune in the wintertime in the growth space. Hanging out over here by the Eureka Palm, just looking like a champ. Looking like a stud. Freckles is the best. Love that croton. Super sturdy croton. All right, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Nice, gorgeous leaf to look at. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. Bye-bye.